Let's look at an interesting example of using a for loop in R to create a sequence of quantile quantile plots, which are often simply referred to as QQ plots. So what exactly is a QQ plot? A QQ plot is a way to compare the quantiles observed for a data set with the theoretical quantiles we expect if the data comes from a certain distribution. So the idea is that we have quantiles that we expect for a certain distribution and we compare those to the quantiles we actually observed for our data set. And if the points of a QQ plot fall close to a straight line, then what that means is it's plausible that the observed data are a sample from the theoretical distribution that we're considering. So I've described a QQ plot in words, but how about we look at a couple just so you get a better idea of how they are used. So here is an example of a plot where the observed data match the theoretical distribution that the data are being compared to. And you can see that overall, the points fall relatively close to a straight line. And in particular, I've drawn this 45 degree reference line, which is what will happen if they match perfectly. And this is pretty close to, so this is an example of what we hope to see if in fact the data do match the theoretical distribution we're comparing it to. In the second example here, the observed data do not match the theoretical distribution we're comparing it to. And we have our 45 degree reference line here, and you can see that these points are nowhere near that. They're not straight at all, they're curving. And so this would be an example where the observed quantiles do not match the theoretical quantiles. And so we don't think that the data that we observed actually come from the distribution it's being compared to. So oftentimes we do this for normal distributions. So we look at theoretical quantiles for a normal distribution, and we compare that to the observed quantiles for a data set. And if those two things match, then when we plot the two sets of quantiles as pairs, then the points are going to fall close to a straight line, which, mean, which means we think that the data come from that distribution. So as I already mentioned, QQ plots are often used to evaluate whether our data come from a normal distribution. That's not the only distribution we can use, but that's the most common one. However, the problem is that even if you have a random sample from a normal population, for example, each one of the samples is going to vary. And so when you plot your QQ plot, how close to a straight line do the points need to fall before we think that it actually does come from a normal distribution? So how much variability can we expect in our QQ plot if the data are in fact a random sample from a normal population? So what we're going to do is we're going to create a sequence of QQ plots for data coming from a normal distribution. And what we're gonna do here in this code is the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to set a number seed. The reason we do this is because it will make our example reproducible. So if you run this example on your computer, you should get the same results as me on my computer. If we don't set that number seed, then the results are going to be a lot more random and it's difficult to reproduce results. The next thing that we do in our code is we're going to use the mfrow argument of the par function to create a two by two plotting grid. So we're gonna create a sequence of four plots, two in one row, and two plots in the next row. And so in order to set up that plotting area, we can use the par function to do it. And so MF row is the argument that we specify to create that two by two plotting grid. Next, we are going to have our for loop. So we start our for loop here. We're gonna use the iterator i, and we want i to be in the sequence of values one, two, three, and four. We have our open and closed curly braces indicating what we want to do for each value of i in our loop. And what we're gonna do for each value of i is we draw a random sample of size 20 from a standard normal distribution using the R norm function. We store that in S. We are going to create a QQ plot for a normal distribution using the sample values in S. And then I'm going to add a reference line using the AB line function. That's going to be a 45 degree line that's what we expect the points, that's how we expect the points to fall if in fact the data perfectly matched the quantiles of a normal distribution. And so this, this is simply a reference line to give us an idea of how close to the normal quantiles the observed quantiles were. What's interesting about this example is that none of the code that we run inside the for loop actually depends on the value of i. We simply want to do the same set of code four times we didn't have to use a for loop for this. We could have done a while loop or something like that. But here we are, we used a for loop. 
And then here, this is actually an important detail. After you complete drawing your sequence of four plots, you want to reset your plotting grid to have size one by one. So basically just a single plot. So we use the MF row argument once again of the par function, and we set our plotting grid to a one by one grid. And the reason we have to do this manually is that if we didn't, then it would retain, then R would retain the two by two plotting structure. And anytime you created another plot, it would start filling in graphics on that two by two plotting grid, which we don't want. So this sets it back to what we expect in general. So let's run this code and see what we get. So here's our sequence of four normal QQ plots. And you can see that even though we're in fact drawing data from an IID standard normal distribution, that the points in our QQ plots actually can vary quite a bit. So we have four different results here. It's not a perfectly straight line. And there's more formal ways that we can go about quantifying how much variability to expect. But this helps us to get a sense of how much variability there can be in a data, data set while still being consistent with a normal distribution.